which sounds a lot like stand-up comedy, for whatever reason. Anyways. Scoot on over there, Ian. Huh? Take a seat. How are you feeling tonight? Are you ready for funk music? Yeah! I'm very excited here, but you'll have to wait. Doug, I haven't started yet. There's no reason to laugh. My name is Liam. This is my father's cardigan. You might have recognized it from your English class. He's a very proficient teacher. Uh, so any of you from the 1992 class of Richmond? There you go, man. Thank you. Yo, Yep. Up here? Right this is my chin. first show. Right on your chin, son. Right on my chin? Yeah, there you Not much of a mix between funk music and comedy. The uh, biggest joke in funk music is, of course, George Clinton, <laughs> who is also the most recognizable man in the world. You could put 500 George Clintons in a room with about 500 Hitlers, and you show that photo to someone, and they will say, why are there so many George Clintons? <laughs> there is no, you, you can't think of a situation where you couldn't immediately pick out George Clinton. There's no Where is Waldo George Clinton edition. It would be 30 pages of macaws and sequin conventions and yarn expos. And you would still be able to po point out George Clinton. That book would never... There's already the musical Where's Waldo, and that's finding uh, John Stamos and Beach Boy music videos. <laughs> And it's not, it's weird, because they're not even the obscure fringe Beach Boy music videos. They're just like Kokomo. Like, really? John Stamos is in Kokomo? How do you play that game? How do you play the fine John Stamos and Beach Boy music videos? Well, I'll tell you. You pick out a John, you pick out a Beach Boy music video, and then you look in the crowd of uh, Greek Adonises and neon tank tops, and you try to pick them out. And it's impossible, and the Beach Boys know this. They know how hard it is to track John Stamos, because they had to find him for the music video. Because there's no way John Stamos called up the Beach Boys and was like, hey, you should let me be in your music videos. I'm John Stamos. It was obviously the Beach Boys doing. And they found him. They tracked him down and said, Stamos, come be in our music videos. And so, knowing that, if you can't find John Stamos in the Beach Boy music videos by about a minute and a half in, they'll help you out. Three second spot of Stamos on the congas, right there. And then after that, it's just spot the Stamos. You just watch the music video looking for the auxiliary percussion. And every time you're like, wait, that's John Stamos on the congas, right there, that's great. And in between cutscenes of like Tom Cruise, because that's what the Kokomo music video is. It's, it's Tom Cruise walking on a beach, Beach Boys playing, Stamos. And I thought that was odd, because there's already, you know, Stamos and the Beach Boys, I thought the only connection between Full House and the music industry was the fact that Alanis Morissette wrote all those songs about Dave Coulier, which was weird, because Dave Coulier is like 20, minute, 20 years older than her, and she's writing love songs about him. So between the Beach Boys and Stamos, and Dave Coulier and Alanis Morissette, that's about all of music. All of music lies between Beach Boys and Alanis Morissette. And I'm only assuming because Stamos and Coulier have a spot, Bob Saget lies somewhere in between. And I found him. He plays bass drum for our school, mar school marching band. And I know this because when me and two other strapping young lads from our school newspaper played the varsity basketball team, he was there. I came out and I tickled uh, Andrew Hutchins, the star guard at the tip-off, winning it, by the way. It was a very, very major accomplishment. Big accomplishment in my life was beating Andrew Hutchins in a tip-off via tickling. And throughout this game, I had placed treats because who can, who can pass up a treat, really? <laughs> Even in the middle of a basketball game, you're the star power forward and someone offers you a Mountain Dew just strung in the crowd randomly. You can't pass it up. So Andrew Hutchins would guard me. I'd give him a treat. Go back and forth. He's making shots, missing shots. I'm missing shots and missing shots. And halftime comes. I didn't know there was a halftime, frankly. I thought we were going out there for about a minute and a half trying to beat the varsity baseball team, the basketball team. It didn't happen. We come out after halftime. I start guarding Andrew Hutchins. We're pushing him back and forth. I'm treating him every once in a while. Cody Peters, star shooting guard, comes up, elbows me. I'm bleeding. Terrible situation. I stumble over to Mr. Sullivan. Josh Johnson, wrestling champ of the state, comes up and says, Liam, you know what we do when we bleed? 
He says, we go back out there and wrestle. <laughs> and I, say, I say, Josh Johnson, you don't want my blood on your balls, I have HIV. <laughs> and as, I, am I, as I'm escorted out of the gymnasium, I look over, and there's Doug Mason. And I'd like to bring him up here. Doug Mason, and Ian, and Max. What the fuck? Please get Yes, sir. <laughs>